What is your name and what's your current occupation? My name is Viola Llewellyn and I'm the president and co-founder of Avamba Solutions Inc. Can you tell us a little bit about what your life was before starting your company or maybe you had multiple companies, but what was your life like when you were an employee? I was employed in a job that most people would give up just about everything and anything to have. I always had brilliant jobs doing exciting things for very wealthy white guys with more money than they had sense. And I was the first employee and the founding member of an insurance investment team uh, that was investing in life insurance policies here in Washington, D.C. I actually live in Maryland. My job was so brilliant that as the first employee, I was told I could write my own offer letter. I put what I wanted in it and they gave me exactly what I wanted. I was such a valuable member of the team that I was actually on my boss's life insurance policy as a recipient of everything and anything if he did die. I had a lot of leeway to, to develop the company. I built the back office and I did a lot of the capital raising and relationships myself. I did not plan to leave my job. I left it because it was a Tuesday afternoon and I got pissed off and I got bored. So I just got up and I walked out and it occurred to me that I think I can do this myself. There wasn't really anything that um, gave me an indication that this was the life I was going to choose. I absolutely had no idea. This was an evolution of events. The job I had before I started, the one or two companies before Avambo was just brilliant. I had, I learned so much. I had a lot of power, a lot of money, and life was good. And like everybody else in the diaspora, just because my life was great, it never gave me any reason to think about anything else or anyone else but I'm glad that those days are behind me now. I, I want to understand what were your frustrations? What really, you touched on it a little bit, but if you can expand on what really led you from living that dream job essentially to you know going on your own, any frustrations, any, yeah, why? I guess is the question. It was the sort of frustrations that happen when there is an, a disruption based on gender. When I started the job, I gave myself the title of executive assistant because there was just me, this one guy, and I started hiring other people. And I rose up through the ranks, and it never occurred to me that my job title didn't match what I did because my money matched what I did, and that's all I cared about. And nobody ever questioned me. I had full access even to the board. What made me angry and frustrated was that when I started to see that business decisions were not good, and that the 2008 crash was coming and I could see it, all of a sudden I was told that I was merely a secretary and I didn't know what I was doing or what I was talking about. And that was not my title. And that's what pissed me off and made me angry. So when I saw that there was going to be a bit of a hostile takeover between my business, my boss and his business partner, along with the fact that some members of the board were very angry and upset, about the way that finances were being managed and the fund was beginning to lose money and i had put my hand up and said something's going wrong here with the portfolio because i wasn't listened to i got upset and i walked out the door i didn't even consult my husband it was a tuesday afternoon literally and i just decided today's the day right now and i had no idea what i was going to do but i did go home and for three days, I just allowed my brain to just get to a default level so that I could start to generate new ideas that were based on what I wanted to do, not new ideas based on what was expected of me. And it was the best thing I could have done just to take that moment to breathe and to think. And when I did start a business, which has nothing to do with what uh, Ovamba or anything on the African continent is, I did what a lot of women do. I lowballed myself and I just assumed that I could just do uh, consulting business development which is such a vague piece of nonsense quite frankly it was me going to people and wondering if I could help them with their businesses to be better but everybody gave me things that were a lot more meaty and substantial than that and it began to dawn on me that I actually am that good so I withdrew from that and it was at the same time that my business partner and I met and it didn't take me long literally less than a day to decide I'm going to sell my house and everything I've got, and I'm going to go into business with Marvin Cole. And that's the story. Wow. Impressive. Now, fast forward, if you could touch on what Avamba, your company, does today, and more importantly, the impact that it has either on the community or more importantly on yourself. So, I'm really trying to understand 
you made that decision. Fast forward a couple of years, you're over you are today. Are you happy? And what makes you happy? And what impacts do you have in your community? If you can start with what Avamba does and finish by that, it'll be fantastic. Avamba actually started out doing what you're talking about, Aris, which is engaging the diaspora with the hopes that they would make investments into their individual countries because we made the assumption in 2013 that if we're always remitting capital and money to our family and friends to help them out, but we don't see an attachment of return or investment into, the, into that money, perhaps there is a space upon which we could um, take these savings groups, Njangis, Partner Money, Tontines, Sacos, whatever you want to call them, and we could create a digital platform whereby people could say, I want to invest in my con country, my town, my village. Here is some capital almost in a bond form, and Ovamba would find things to invest in and make a return. This was such a loose, weak business proposition that it never got off the ground. But strangely enough, as we began to get these um, rejections of our thesis, it gave us the idea that the difference between being in the diaspora and building a business based on what we think and being in the diaspora and taking the time to understand what is really needed is what makes the difference between success and failure. So what we are today is a trade tech company. We're an innovator of alternative trade solutions for the small and medium enterprises, especially those in the informal sector, to give them the business improvement tools and the ability to go to our partner banks who license our technology so that they can get capital for trade, importation, and growth. And what, basically what that means is it's the mobile apps, it's our product called Pamojo, which is a blend of CRM, ERP, HR, and business improvement and performance monitoring that is also bolted together with another product called Bank Partner, which is our proprietary risk model that takes a look at all the things that banks don't use to measure risk in African businesses, including culture, ethnicity. And it gives us the ability to score companies to see how much capital can be put in place for them to get access to inventory. So I'll say that in the most simple way for you, Avant is a trade tech company that uses its proprietary risk models and licenses these systems to banks to help them to do more financial inclusion for those businesses that are involved in importing goods or in light manufacturing. Now, hopefully that's quite clear. Yes. And you asked if I was happy. Yeah, so there's the second half of my question is, with what you're doing, how can you touch on the impact you have in the community and circle back in how that satisfies you or not? There are over 450 million small and medium enterprises on the continent. That's those that they can count. Just imagine those that they cannot because they don't register themselves for taxes. The impact that we've had in Cameroon alone means that we have hired, I think more than 100 people have come through our HR community uh, who have gone out into the Cameroon business community just a little bit better because they've been with us. Then there are the 360 something companies who have successfully applied for capital with us who we have funded. And we fund transactions that range from about 25,000 euro to about half a million euro. We have seen individuals who could only order two containers of goods every six months go up to the point where they're ordering 32 containers every two months. We've seen direct impact through these, uh, the value chain of those who are in wholesale bringing their retail customers to us for us to fund them to buy more from our original customer. We've also seen banks realize that they actually do not know how to safely uh, provide investment capital or working capital to the local businesses. And they want to find a way to reduce their non-performing loans by using Avamba's bank partner product. The impact has been huge. We've won awards for being one of the first to create natural language chatbots for voice computing in African languages. We've seen impact with more women being able to get financing without needing to have a house or land as collateral. We've also seen impact with um, microfinance institutions who have begrudgingly stopped disturbing us now that they understand that we don't charge interest because they just assume that we were their direct competitor. We are not. And the impact that I think I'm most proud of um, above all of that is the impact to the families 
that have seen their children get more access to a better way of running their businesses. This is so important. We don't do this just so that we can be profitable. It's important to be profitable, but we do this so that we can have an ecosystem that will have generational wealth that can be transferred as companies begin to sustain and stay longer and move beyond just subsistence for an entire community. And how does all of that translate into your own satisfaction? And I really want to compare the satisfaction that you had about 10 years ago in with your company. I mean, not your company, the company you were, you basically had a carte blanche to the satisfaction that you have today based on what you just laid out. Uh, satisfaction is a weak word. I will go to my grave knowing that I did something extraordinary and that's what keeps me motivated. I couldn't be happier. I've been building Ogamba now for seven years and I had a business with Marvin Cole for about two years before that. Uh, every day I wake up, I'm excited. I'm happy. Even the disappointments are okay. They're just part of the journey. I love what I do. It's an honor. It's, um, it's commendable. It's exciting. It's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart. Not everybody gets the right to, to do something like this. It's legacy building. I, uh, it's ego stroking. I know that when I go places, people know who I am, but it means that I can use that platform uh, responsibly to do something that's really, really good versus just looking good for the sake of looking good. I love the fact that young women come to me and they can say, look, I've got an issue, I've got a problem, or I need to understand how to run my career a little bit better. So being a mentor to people has been um, excellent. The friendships I've made along the way, the customers that I have come to know, respect, enjoy, and watch them grow. Um, I am one of the happiest people in the world. And I'm especially grateful to my husband who gave up so much to make this dream come true for me, for him, for us, and for the entire continent. 